Setting the rotor to case clearance starts out by installing the new bearing plates with the stock dowel pins. The stock dowel pins are a little bit undersized and they help get the plates aligned at least close enough to start taking measurements. After the rear plate was bolted in place, I took the rear bearing and I drove it in place with the bearing driver until it touched the shoulder on the back of the rotor. Surprisingly, everything's pretty even. I come up with about 11 thousandths clearance between each lobe of each rotor at the front corner and at the back corner of the case. This means that I'll have to push the rotors down in the case by about four or five thousandths of an inch. Even though the SA Designs book says that the bottom clearance can be as tight as four thousandths, and the Detroit Diesel Manual says that the bottom can be as tight as four thousandths, I'm going to go slightly bigger on that. I'll probably shoot for around five or six. So the next step will be taking the six thousandths feeler gauge, putting it between the lobe of the rotor and the bottom corner of the case, and then loosening the end plates and tapping the end plates down until the feeler gauge wedges between the rotor and the bottom corner of the case. Sometimes it's easier when setting the bottom clearance to start out tight and then run your feeler gauge against the rotor in the case and then if you need to loosen it up a little bit a rawhide hammer on the end plate works really good for tapping it down in small increments. Just that little tick is all it takes. To keep from upsetting the side clearance too much, I usually loosen every one of the end plate bolts except for this one and this one. I leave this one tight so that the end plate can't shift left or right while I'm trying to set the bottom clearance. Likewise when I'm doing the opposite side, this one gets tightened up and this one gets loosened so that when I'm tapping the end plate over, I only shift this corner instead of sliding the plate back and forth. That doesn't mean that I won't have to double check the side clearance again, but this seems to upset the side clearance as little as possible when I do it this way. This is the 4000 feeler gauge just to get my bottom clearance started on this corner. When I feel the 4,000th feeler gauge starting to drag, then I snug up the end plate and I start checking it with my final size, which is going to be 6,000th. Six is a little bit loose, so I'll check and see if it's tight with 8,000th, which it is, so I'm actually getting pretty close. I'll see if seven slides in there. No, nope, seven doesn't. So I'll check all three lobes quick to make sure that they're consistent. Seven still does not go there. And seven still does not go here. 
So it looks like I'm actually at six thousandths already. So I think I'm going to snug the bolts up now. And then I'm going to try to check my side clearance one more time. After setting the bottom clearance, now I have to recheck the side clearance on each rotor. You can't do a lot to change it except to make sure that it's equal on both sides. I take my long feeler gauges and I put a red stripe about halfway down. That's going to correspond with the outside edge of the case where the rotor should be being measured. Just to be clear on the procedure for measuring side clearance, you want to measure along all four corners of the case right here between the tip of the rotor and the case wall. I slide the feeler gauge in and try to get it to go past the lobe there. It just went past. So this side has side clearance of between 14 and 15 thousandths. And then I do the same thing on the opposite side. And even though you probably won't get this lucky, it looks like I'm actually within about a thousandth of an inch. I'm about 15 on one side and a tight 14 on the other. So I'll be able to leave my side clearance alone right now. I'll double check the bottom clearance one more time. And if it looks good, then I'll snug up all the rest of the bolts on the case. And I'll be able to take it over to the drill press and run a reamer through the dowel pin holes so that I can put my new doll pins in.